Hello, my name is Mark Navarro, and I'm showing you the 2000 Xcope machine, X-ray machine. And uh, right here is our proprietary software. Over here is our X-ray module. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the X-ray. You can see that the X-ray will turn on, and uh, it will turn red. Over here is your indicator, KV settings, and then you could either type in a particular KV settings and press enter, or you could go up and down the toggle. Down below is the UA microampage settings. And then over here is our video. You can see that if I move my toggle, the video uh, grayscale will change. Um, over here in the bottom right hand corner is our secondary camera that takes a, a shot of whatever uh, sample is on the stage. What I'll do now is I'll capture imaging and it will create a new image. Once I'm ready, I'll go ahead and click on a particular area. You can see now that it's going and scrolling through that particular area of interest and then I will zoom out utilizing the keyboard command. I will change my video. You can see now that we're getting a little bit more better feedback, more grayscale. I will now go ahead and go into a particular ball. You see that we can achieve quite a bit of magnification. I'll adjust my video setting. You can see that now we can see a little bit of the voiding there. And then I'll zoom out again. Pretty quick, utilizing my key command, now I'm zooming out. X-ray uh, source is going below. I'll go ahead and scroll a little bit and scan through the particular uh, BGA. Um, when I'm, once I'm ready, I'll go ahead and go to a particular location. I'm going back to that same corner. I'm gonna pull up my tool, zoom in a little bit. I'll go ahead and adjust my video. Okay, once I have my video adjusted to a, a setting, that I prefer. I'll go ahead and pause. Now we're in our tool mode. We have a couple other tools in here. I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the region of interest square tool. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tool area on top of this six ball grid. I'm gonna use my BJA tool here in the bottom left. And then my parameter will show up. I'll click on the BJA tool and you can see right right away that if I scroll with my wheel mouse, you can see that we're toggling through the actual voiding. Um, once I'm ready, I could just go ahead and go to my inspection tab, save, I could name this one test one, save it, go to my navigational area. Over here is our programming area, our macro cell location. What I'll do now is I will capture a cell, cell location, uh, cell capturing will save our micro, uh, micro ampage and KV setting position X and Y, and also our video. I'll go to my macro manager on the left hand side and I will add the test video or the test uh, tool in there. So now we have one particular cell location with a tool behind it. And I'll go ahead and go to the next location by toggling through and then I will recreate the same process. This is called step and repeat. So what I'll do now is I'll do the same thing. Click on my BJA tool, BJA tool there. No particular voiding. I could also adjust my parameters here. Uh, you have roundness, check missing, bridge, uh, particularly for this particular uh, inspection, we're just checking for the void. So over here, you can see the void is zero. Go ahead and go to my inspection. Save this one again. I'll name it test two. You can see that it saves the region of interest, which is um, the background. I'll go ahead and save it. Go back to my navigational cell location and I'll click the secondary location. So now we have a step and repeat program here going on. I'll go ahead, if you notice that if I go out of my live mode. If I go back to my live mode and I double click on this cell, it saves that location. And you can see that it automatically um, shows the tool and then my report after that. You can see that it'll show you biggest void, total void, other um, parameters on the tool itself. Um, and if I wanted to, I could go ahead and um, scroll some more. You see that it's scrolling now. I'm gonna zoom out real quick. Okay. Zoom out a little bit more. And then I could toggle through a couple of other location on the board. For instance, I'll go to this top board over here. I'll click on it, this area. You can see that now we have a, a couple of the different voids in here. So I'll go ahead and adjust my grayscale again. Get a pretty good grayscale there. Okay, and now I'll zoom in a little bit. 
So now we have four area pads with voiding in it. I'll go ahead and go to my tool mode. Now I'm gonna use my our void tool. Void tool is used for a single void. You can use it on uh, leads, pads, pretty much anything with a singular. And you can see right away that once I clicked on this void tool right here in the bottom, our parameter shows up. You have different settings there. And right away it picked up the actual uh, voiding. And I could go in and zoom in in here. And if I wanted to, I could utilize my keyboard command, copy and paste, Windows command. So copy, paste. And you can see that I could just go ahead and grab that, that copy paste version of that tool. I could also um, highlight both of them, copy paste, and then drag it. And then I'll have four of them. And I'll go ahead and hit inspect. And you can see that all four um, of the tool will show up. And over here, if there is extra uh, voiding. You can just double click it. And also, you could go back and toggle this with uh, toggle this over here with our tool. So now what I could do over here is save this particular inspection area. I'll go ahead and name this test three, save it, and then I could add it. So I'm gonna add another cell location with the four pads in it, and then I will add the test three tool behind it. So that's pretty much it. That's a step and repeat program. I could just go back to that first one again, and it'll go back to that location. You can see that now it's doing its uh, um, and I can just run the program. So if I hit run program, it will go ahead and run the program from the first location, second, and third. Push yes on this. Pass or fail. Pass. And there you go. Go ahead and pass this. And so after we're done, uh, program's done, it's going to show you all the cell locations, all the voids within that cell. You can see that there's four here in the bottom in cell three. And also, uh, it automatically saves our images. So I'll just go back to our, um, you right here. I'll save location. Go to our setting. And then the path administrative documents administrative documents okay file path exit so on our documents it's going to show us the data okay okay now i'm going to go back to a bja ball and i'm just going to show you some oblique viewing here um So also a couple other things is uh, we could zoom in into a ball and let's say um, you're inspecting this particular area. This is a double-sided component. Uh, what we could do is we could put a VGA tool behind this double-sided component. And then you'll notice that uh, some of the balls will not see it right away. Okay, see like over here, this is not seeing it. What we could do now is we could add this uh, ball individually as a seed. Because of the overlapping grayscale, the tool is seeing it as a maybe a double-sided or overlap. So what we could do is we could fit this tool to a single ball. I'll go ahead and click on that ball. I'll add it as a seed. And then right away, you'll notice that uh, it adds it. Even though the grayscale is uh, overlapping over here, we're still able to do double-sided components, BGA inspection. Um, with this particular tool. So it's really neat. So you can see now we have all the balls in one BGA tool. Um, so now I'm gonna go back to my live mode. I'm just gonna go here in the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, start tilting. You can see here in the bottom, show you some axis location. So now I'm tilting the detector. You can see that we're starting to see some oblique vias over here. So 
So now I can uh, adjust my grayscale a little bit. I'm going to get more in the middle of this. So now we're around 30 degrees, and uh, we can look at some uh, some head and pillow here. You see that the pads right here, the bottom top. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. So full mag, uh, we're able to do around like 35, uh, 36 uh, angle on full mag uh, with oblique viewing. And uh, we need to go back down a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll up to uh, some BGAs here. And uh, I'm gonna pull up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and uh, capture the whole BJ here in oblique. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust my KV. I'm sorry, my video. Okay, so that's pretty much a, a full BJ tilt right there. Um, thank you very much, and um, thank you.